So this week's video is a little bit different. It's a little bit more candid, a little bit more kind of live. Of course, it's not live, but a little bit more that kind of feel because I'm going to be doing a lot of this stuff in the video for the first time. I'm going to be taking a look at it alongside you so you'll see my genuine reaction to a lot of this stuff. Now, we're of course going to be diving into Photoshop and the Photoshop beta specifically, where we're going to look at Generative Fill, which is the new AI update to Photoshop, which allows you to add things into photos, allows you to expand photos, loads of different things that you can do with it. It's very interesting. It's fascinating, actually. But it's also a little bit scary. It makes me feel a tiny bit uncomfortable. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about kind of all this stuff while we're going through the video, so pop them down in the comments. Otherwise, let's just get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday, we bring in a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This one, oh, things are getting spicy. Things are getting a little bit spicy. Now we are looking at the Photoshop beta update, so you can actually get to that yourself by going to your Creative Cloud desktop app, which is right here. Go over to your apps and then come down to beta apps on the left here. You'll find the different betas. You can just click install to install the Photoshop beta where you will have access to the latest version, which includes generative fill, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. And this is a powerful, Oh, this is a powerful tool. And you might have already seen some stuff on the internet about it, but essentially this is an AI update to allow Photoshop to fill in different parts of your photo. So you can add things in, you could add completely new things into the photo. Photoshop will try and match it to the scene, the colors and the lighting and stuff like that. You can expand the photo out. Let's dive into it, see what it can do, see kind of where it can get to and all that kind of stuff. Let's start off with this photo. I think this is one of the uses that I think will be most useful to people because I think it's actually genuinely something I could imagine using a lot. So let's say that you've taken a product photo like this of the Fujifilm XS20, but you needed more space to the sides. You wanna make a banner and you need space to the sides to put some text or graphics or whatever it might be. We can come to the crop tool and just actually just crop this out like so. And then what we need to do is actually select the parts of the photo that we want Photoshop to fill in with the generative fill. So I'm gonna start on the left. I'm just gonna use the selection tool here to draw a nice box around that. And all I'm gonna do is come down to this new contextual menu, which comes up below. I'm gonna click generative fill and I can type in here what I want to be in there or I can leave it blank and Photoshop will kind of work out what I want to be in there. I'm gonna click generate and Photoshop is gonna work out how to extend the photo over to that part and then fill it in. Look at that. I mean, I've not done this particular photo before, but look at how Photoshop has just filled in that side, that's kind of crazy. You wouldn't you wouldn't even really know. So let's do the right hand side as well. So again, I've just selected that. Generative fill, generate, just leaving it blank. Now like any tool, and especially this is in beta, it's not perfect, but it's really useful to have this available to you. I mean, look at this, it's filled in where this plant is. This is a little bit more difficult on this side. That's pretty good. The plant pot actually is not bad. Is it a bit weird? I don't think so. I think it's only because I know the plant pot is wider than that, but it actually looks pretty good. But something nice about generative fill is you also have these variations. So if you come over to the right, Photoshop will actually generate three different variations for you to pick from. And you can actually just cycle through like that. That one's a bit weird. And that one is probably more true to how the plant pot actually is. But I don't know, does it look better? I don't know. We could stick with that one. That is crazy detail though with this plant. That feels really, really impressive. So we've actually gone from what was this photo and just just stretched it out like that. And that's that's really impressive. That's such a useful way to use this. But let's look at some other stuff. Let's look at a portrait. So this is me. This is a portrait of me taking on the Samyang 135mm. Let's actually just stretch this out a bit. As you can see, the top of my head is cut off. So let's bring that up. And then let's also bring the bottom down a little bit as well. Let's start by just selecting the top here. Again, I'm gonna leave it blank. I'm gonna let Photoshop do its thing. Generative fill, generate. It's a little bit more to work with here because it's gotta do top of my head. It's gotta work with the shallow depth of field. There's kind of a lot to think about. That is not bad though, is it? Wow, okay, so that's pretty good. Let's see the other variations. That looks real. Would you know that wasn't real? Wow, okay, let's, let's select this bottom part. And again, let's just leave it blank. Look at that as well. That has filled in that bottom part unbelievably well. Let's look at the variations. That's perfect. Let's see how far we could actually bring this kind of out. Let's see what happens if we just keep going with this a little bit. So we do the left side first. We'll just actually bring that out. I'm just generating this. I'm not telling it anything to put in there. And we'll just we'll just see how far exactly 
we can actually go with this. So that looks really good on that side. Let's fill it in on this side. Just remember, we, we, we started with not even the full head. Okay, that's all right, but let's see. That's better. That looks better, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. What if I wanted to take this all the way to more of a, a, a full portrait? Let's let's go for something like let's go for something like this. This that's quite a lot for it now to actually work out. Again, I'm gonna leave it blank, just see what it does. Okay. Okay, so that's not quite the same. It's not bad, but it's not, you know, it's, pro it's probably not the one. It's not bad though, is it? I mean, it's in it's really interesting. That's, well, no, see, I've got two thumbs maybe on one hand. Mm. Let's just generate one more time and see what, see, just see what it does. Wow. Okay. I'm holding like a, like a laptop in that one. Uh, can I just say that? That one actually looks really good, but for some reason I'm holding a laptop. This is fascinating. Honestly, I could just do this all day. That one looks not bad as well. Not sure what's going on with that one. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there with this photo. But this is, I mean, this is absolutely crazy. So I did actually have a play around off camera with this photo just to see where I could get it to. I actually went in and uh, adjusted my hair. So I made it so that I had a shaved head. I adjusted my beard as well. I managed to come all the way out to sort of a full length portrait of me leaning on a bar. And then I decided to just keep going. So I added in more of this kind of garden bar, a person kind of standing with me at the bar, a waiter in the background waiting on tables. This is pretty wild stuff. Sometimes it requires a little bit of patience. Otherwise this video would be you know, hours long because this is absolutely fascinating stuff. But okay, so I've already kind of experimented a little bit with adding things to the photos as well. So for example, the shaved head, which I showed you before, it was able to, to do a pretty good job with that. Things like changing my beard, which, uh, which is pretty impressive stuff, actually. And then adding the waiter, adding the person at the bar. Let's add some birds to this photo. That should be easy, I'm guessing. Let's do something like this. So we've got Matilda there taking a photo. This is actually Durdle Door, just a different viewpoint. Let's imagine she's taking a photo of some birds. So let's go generative fill. And here, let's go uh, a, a large flock of birds. I feel like that's going to make the birds very big because I've written the word large, but I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Essentially, I've just made a selection though in the photo and then I'm just I'm just telling Photoshop what I want to put in there. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. What is that? Okay, that's not the one. That didn't work very well at all. Yeah, so... Okay, so there are there are limitations obviously to this, and that is certainly one of them. <laughs> okay, that's that is pretty weird actually. This this one in particular, I just I like that they're in this sort of weird shape, and then what is that? You can see though, this is pretty interesting stuff outside of maybe the weird birds that we've just added. Where I think this works the best is where you are trying to expand the scope of the photo. So this photo, for example, I just want to end on. It feels like it might be a more difficult one because it's a forest, which typically are a bit messy, maybe, in terms of kind of lots of things going on. Let's imagine we want to make it much more sort of landscape. Let's really make this a wider photo like this. Let's even, maybe let's, let's do some of this. I want to make Matilda there much smaller in the scene. So let's go ahead and do the left side first. Wow, kind of looks real. Do, uh, let's do the right hand side. Oh wow. Okay, I didn't expect it to do that. That's that's really cool. That's not what this area looks like, but that is really cool. Let's have a look at another variation. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Okay, this is this is this is fascinating. Okay, let's let's do let's just do the top. One thing I didn't even really think about, but it's done such a good job with this tree because we only had kind of half of it. It's added in roots at the bottom, the lighting, everything looks really good. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's, that is absolutely crazy. Let's look at some of the variations. That looks, I'm gonna keep that, let's go for that one. This is the photo from this. We've ended up with that. The thing is, looking at this online, I don't know if you'd be able to tell. Looking at it in Photoshop where you can zoom right in and pixel peep and do all this kind of stuff, 
you can definitely probably find i don't know though actually i mean it, i can't even remember what's real and what's not in photoshop you could you could see but looking at this online i don't know if you'd be able to tell this is a i, I like this photo much better than the original i mean the original was nice but i like this photo a lot i think that this is very powerful but it's also quite scary as a photographer because it means that at this point especially online you realistically don't know whether you're looking at real stuff i think that's definitely a conversation that needs to be had where does ai fit in in the photographic space because i think if we don't decide anything it'll decide for us and it'll just run crazy and run rampant and just be everywhere and you know this is amazing and there are definitely incredible uses for this save an enormous amount of time i mean expanding things out to have a bigger platform you know for example this photo if you want to use this as an adventure photo right but for a banner or something and you need text on it i've just expanded that out so you can have text without covering up your subject great and you wouldn't necessarily know the difference but where it becomes dangerous is whether this is then put across as an original photo that was taken by someone there's, you know, there's a lot of questions, right? There's a lot of questions, a lot of things to think about. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So let, let me know down in the comments what you think about, about this. Would you use it? How would you use it? Does this make you feel uncomfortable? Because I'm excited because this is really fun. I've had a, I've had a really good time. But I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable just because I really like this photo and I didn't take it. I took this, which I also like. But this is a better photo, for me anyway. So that's an interesting, that's, an, that's very interesting. Hmm, hmm. I'm gonna have to think about this some more. We will do a video, I think, on the merits and the dangers and all that kind of stuff of AI in the photographic space. I think it's a really interesting topic. So like I say, let me know your, your thoughts down in the comments because that'd be really interesting to maybe include in the video. Of course, like I say, don't forget to like and subscribe, new content all the time. I will see you next time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.